Welcome to the Creative Pen Podcast. I'm Joanna Penn, thriller author and creative entrepreneur, bringing you interviews, inspiration, and information on writing, publishing options, and marketing ideas for your book. You can find the episode show notes, your free author blueprint, and lots more information at thecreativepen.com. And that's pen with a double N. And here's the show. Hello creatives, I'm Joanna Penn and this is episode number 728 of the podcast and it is Friday the 15th of December 2023 as I record this. Today's show is another solo episode and I'm talking about my 15 year creative and business pivot. I started The Creative Pen on the 8th of December 2008, when I had one non-fiction book, and I have changed many things slowly along the way, but now I am seriously pivoting. Seth Godin had a pertinent blog post on this recently that I wanted to read because it's perfect as an introduction to today's show. It's called We Used to Do That. So from Seth's blog, and I'll link to this in the show notes. When electricity came along, there was a swathe of industries that were trapped in an old way of thinking. The only ones that thrived were able to walk away from what they used to do and eagerly embrace something new. When the internet was young, the major book publishers had everything they needed to create a dominant search engine. After all, they were in the business of organising the world's information. With just one exception, they didn't even consider it. That's because they believed their job was to sell books to bookstores. This is even more urgent for individuals. What you were trained to do, what you did yesterday, that is a gift from your past, not an obligation. Beginning the analysis with, what I used to do was is a great way to open the door to what you're going to do tomorrow. In this solo episode, I'm going to tell you what I am going to do tomorrow. So that's coming up in the main segment. So in publishing and book marketing things, interesting this week as Penguin Random House acquires Hay House, one of the biggest self-help book companies, which publishing perspectives reported and I'll link to this in the show notes. Now I wanted to bring this up for a couple of reasons. So first of all, if you want a traditional publishing deal, it's always good to consider what happens with an acquisition like this. And the first thing to check is what does your contract say? You would be amazed how many authors I've talked to over the years who've said they don't even know what their contract says about an acquisition like this or when a company goes bust or a merger or any of these things that happen quite normally with companies. So if you have a book with Hay House, and I know many authors who do, what happens now? Will your book be treated the same? Can you get the rights back? And if you are going to sign a contract with a traditional publisher, check the clauses to see what might happen. Secondly, from a business perspective, it's instructive to remember what business we're in. And this deal just demonstrates it really well. A publishing company buys intellectual property assets, which generate revenue for shareholders and keeps the company going so they can pay employees and the bills. So in this case, uh, Penguin Random House are buying a whole load of books, courses, audio and other products by Hay House writers and creators. Publishing Perspectives reports that the company carries a backlist of more than 1,500 titles and Hay House is publishing some 100 titles annually at this point. So listen to that. It says a backlist of more than 1,500 titles. Nothing about authors. They're buying those intellectual property assets. That is what Penguin Random House has bought. So really interesting to think about it that way. What, how does a business make its money? And that's how publishing makes their money. So we are the same in miniature, except we make 
our intellectual property assets. As authors, we make it, we create them from nothing, and then each asset should generate income. So either that is by selling it ourselves as independent authors, by licensing it to publishers, and that kind of thing. But each asset should generate income, which we invest in some way, either by making the most of these assets or by making more assets or investing in other asset classes, which is what I do. I take money out of my business and invest in other asset classes. So this is where you need to separate your author and creator head, the one who cares about the art. Separate it from your business head the one who cares about money and a return on investment for your intellectual property assets. So if you don't understand how a company works at this point, then I have two books for you. First of all, Business for Authors is absolutely still relevant. And I wrote Business for Authors very early on as I came into this business and having come out of mining and other forms of sort of manufacturing businesses, I was like, being an author is no different. It's just we make intellectual property assets instead of, you know, digging stuff out the ground, for example, and selling it. But as much as we like to think we're special, from a business perspective, we are the same (laughs) as these big companies. We have products, customers, vendors, income, expenses, assets, liabilities, and all the rest. So if you want to run a successful business as an author, you need to understand business. And if those words that I've been saying make you uncomfortable, then please add them to your 2024 goals. And my books, as I mentioned, Business for Authors is relevant and and also Your Author Business Plan. Both of those will help. And of course, you can get them from creativepenbooks.com or wherever you usually get books. Also interesting in AI and futurist things, but also is publishing now, OpenAI has announced a partnership with Axel Springer, the first publishing house globally to partner with them to integrate journalism with AI technologies. So I've talked about this before. This is exactly what I expected to happen. The court cases for the initial training of models will drag on as to whether it was fair use to use all that to train models. But the models still need to be up to date going forward. And licensing partnerships are going to be the next business model and perhaps are the greatest hope for creators in that we can actually license our content. And I wrote about this years ago. It's in my 2020 book. I've talked about it before, but that we as indie authors or or maybe through licensing and collection services or other groups, that we create a corpus of our work and license it to services for training and get paid for it. (laughs) Maybe that will happen. I hope so. But Axel Springer is doing it. From OpenAI, the initiative will enrich users' experience with ChatGPT by adding recent and authoritative content on a wide variety of topics and explicitly values the publisher's role in contributing to the products. This marks a significant step in both companies' commitment to leverage AI for enhancing content experiences and creating new financial opportunities that support a sustainable future for journalism. So with this partnership, ChatGPT users around the world will receive summaries of selected global news content from Axel Springer's media brands, which include Politico, Business Insider and European Massive Properties, Build and Welt, uh, which are German, uh, including otherwise paid content. ChatGPT's answers to user queries will include attribution and links to the full articles for transparency and further information. Really interesting first move, and I fully expect this to be followed by lots of other partnerships. Also, I guess on the other stand, or other side, it does say... The collaboration involves the use of quality content from Axel Springer brands for advancing the training of OpenAI's sophisticated large language models. So it's just super interesting the way this is going. But yeah, I'm not surprised by this. I think this is going to be the way it goes. So in personal news, I've mainly been working on these mega solo episodes, (laughs) as well as my end of year roundup, my 2024 goals as I wind down for the end of the year. 
Writing the Shadow is now out on my store in usual formats, no gold ones. That is Kickstarter only. And that that is going to be my way going forward. There will only be these exclusive, beautiful products that I do as part of Kickstarters. And then I'll sell normal formats on the other stores. So creativepenbooks.com has all the formats. And by the end of the year, it will be out everywhere in all the other formats. So if you want writing the shadow, you can now pretty much get it. Also, we have started watching more movies. It is couch snacks and movie time of year. (laughs) I wanted to recommend The Creator for your holiday watching list. It is really thought-provoking about AI and humans and gets past a lot of the tired tropes about destroying the world and all that kind of thing. So uh, highly recommended The Creator. So thanks for your emails and comments. Helen left a comment on the Generative AI episode. Fantastically actionable episode. I'm so excited for my author career, which is brilliant. I'm so glad. Julie also left a comment. I loved this episode. I probably listened to it four or more times, given all the times I replayed sections, so I could take notes on the things I'm particularly interested in. I'm actually very encouraged by all the things you shared and grateful you're at the forefront testing things and then sharing with with us as I get ready to redo and relaunch old and new books using AI tools. Again, really pleased to hear from happy people because that episode was a lot of work. (laughs) And also Greg said, a thorough and thought-provoking article. Thanks for your expertise in guiding readers through a fast-moving, often confusing subject. And finally, thanks to Joe and Isla Trent for the cemetery pictures and for stopping to take me some pictures. I always love to see them. Uh, They said, we always listen to your podcast as we drive through the cemetery on our way to pick up our grandson in Tampa. It does have a major road that passes through the middle of it. We're not just driving around the place listening to you. (laughs) Brilliant. Well, thanks so much for the pictures. So remember, you can leave a comment on the podcast show notes at thecreativepen.com or on the YouTube channel or email me, send me pictures of where you're listening, joanna at thecreativepen.com. I love to hear from you. It makes this more of a conversation. So today's show is again sponsored by my wonderful patrons at patreon.com, p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com forward slash the creative pen, who fund my brain and my thinking time on these more expansive and futurist topics. As a patron, you get access to the monthly Q&A, which will be coming out this week, which is like an extra solo show, plus the backlist of all everything I've ever done on the Patreon, plus videos behind the scenes on AI tool demos. This week, I shared my end-to-end process for Beneath the Zoo and how I use various AI tools for that. And in 2024, my Patreon hub will be a really useful resource for authors. One patron said this week, it feels like winning a Willy Wonka golden ticket being part of your community. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. The Patreon is now a monthly subscription, the equivalent of a black coffee a month or a couple of coffees if you're feeling generous. So if you feel you get value from the show and you want more, then come on over and join more than 850 authors. Thanks to all patrons who've been supporting the show for years and months and also to new patrons. I'm so glad you find the show useful. Thanks to new and returning patrons this week, Emily, Jeanette, Judith, Pauline, Stephen, Jan, Kirsten, Steve, Jerry, BW, Kelly and Liv. You can join the community and receive lots of extra information and inspiration as well as supporting the show at patreon.com, p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com forward slash the creative pen. Right, let's get into it. The 15 year author business pivot. On the 8th of December, 2008, I published my first blog post on thecreativepen.com. I had already self-published a book earlier that year and wanted to share my lessons learned. This is my third website. The first was based around my first book, How to Enjoy Your Job or Find a New One, which I later rewrote as Career Change. The second website was on learning about money and investments. I abandoned both when I ran out of things to write about. 
but 15 years later, I still haven't run out of things to write about on the creativepen.com. I left my job to become a full-time author entrepreneur in 2011, and I've changed my business model several times over the years as technology, new service providers and a growing market have expanded our options as indie authors. I still love what I do. I measure my life by what I create. I love holding my books in my hands and saying, I made this. But the pace of change is accelerating, and I need to pivot and reinvent myself in order to keep writing and creating, as well as remain useful to my community and the wider indie author industry. I also need to keep myself engaged. I'm certainly not the same person I was when I started out, and the last few years in particular have been a period of personal change, as discussed in Pilgrimage and Writing the Shadow. So I found this quote useful from Barbara Bradley Haggerty in Life Reimagined, The Science, Art and Opportunity of Midlife. She says, Pivoting on your strengths beats starting from scratch. Redefine success according to your values, not those of the rest of the world. So I'm not going to burn it all down and start anew. I am pivoting instead. In this article, I go through how I will reposition myself for the next 15 years of being an author entrepreneur. As an overview, I will cover from Joanna Penn to J.F. Penn. From creating a loan to the AI-assisted artisan author. From digital-focused to creating beautiful physical books. From high-volume, low-cost to premium products with higher average order value. From retailer-centric to direct-first. From distance to presence. Pivoting a business is always a risk. And will I still be here in another 15 years? So let's get into it. From Joanna Penn to J.F. Penn. For the last 15 years, I've put my Joanna Penn brand first, writing useful books for authors as I've learned, sharing my journey in order to help other authors along the way. Long-time listeners to the podcast and my email subscribers will know that I've been talking about the shadow book for almost the entire time, and in 2023, I finally wrote and published it. Writing the shadow, turn your inner darkness into words, is the fulfilment of a long-term creative promise, and alongside my books, How to Write a Novel and How to Write Nonfiction, it represents everything I have to share on the craft at least for now. When I started out as an indie author, there were very few voices sharing the way ahead. And all the existing writing industry books were for traditionally published authors. So my books were needed. But things have changed. And there are so many wonderful authors sharing tips and strategies and how-to information these days. I also think the market for how-to non-fiction is shifting, which I discussed at length in last week's episode on the impact of generative AI search. So have a listen or a read if you want to learn more about that. All this means that I don't plan to write any new how-to books for authors. I do intend to make my existing backlist more evergreen, so there will be future editions of some of my existing books. And I want to re-record some of the earlier audiobooks as Human Me. So expect those at some point, because basically I outsource those to another narrator, but I want them all in my voice. Many of you have told me that you still find the Creative Pen podcast useful. Hooray! (laughs) We're still here! (laughs) And download numbers support this. At the time of writing, the show has had over 9.3 million downloads across 228 countries, primarily US, UK, Australia and Canada. Thank you for listening. 
I did consider shutting the show down a few years back as I was frankly bored. (laughs) But then the AI scene took off and the rise of direct sales started and now we have plenty to talk about again. So don't worry, I will continue the Creative Pen podcast every week and share behind the scenes business craft and AI information and inspiration with my community at patreon.com forward slash the creative pen. I'm currently rewriting and updating my author blueprint and my email list responders, autoresponders, and I will be streamlining the creativepen.com website content. I will close down my evergreen courses in 2024. More on that to come. But my main pivot is to flip the ratio of my time. From 75% on Joanna Penn and only 25% on JF Penn to the other way around, making JF Penn my focus. I have so much I want to write as JF Penn. I have a huge folder full of projects and it's time to let my dark horse run. More on that in Writing the Shadow. And of course, I'm not starting from zero with this brand. I started writing my first novel during NaNoWriMo in 2009 and published Pentecost as Joanna Penn in 2011. I rebranded and republished it as Stone of Fire by J.F. Penn in 2015 and substantially re-edited the first three arcane books in the series in 2022. In total, I've written 15 novels and co-written five more, as well as one memoir, five novellas and nine short stories, some of which were commissioned and some of which have appeared in anthologies. As J.F. Penn, I've sold, and I really haven't kept track, but the last time I looked, I've sold over half a million fiction books across 179 countries, mostly in US and UK and mostly sold in English language. I was an award finalist for Best Ebook Original at the International Thriller Awards in 2017 for Destroyer of Worlds. As part of the Deadly Dozen box set in 2014, we hit the New York Times bestseller list. The box set included my novella One Day in Budapest. We also hit the USA Today list. In 2016, I hit the USA Today list myself as a single author with my arcane thriller box set containing Stone of Fire, Crypt of Bone and Ark of Blood. And of course, both of those lists have completely changed since then, but it was still possible back then. So as JF Penn, I podcasted for several years on the Books and Travel podcast, as well as writing articles about my travels, and I'm still unclear on what I'm going to do with that website. In early 2023, I published my first memoir, Pilgrimage. I also built my fiction-first Shopify store, jfpenbooks.com, which is growing every week and I love it. So I haven't really done too badly in making JF Pen second fiddle. But imagine what I could do if I spent the next 15 years giving her the time, energy and investment she deserves. It's time to move J.F. Penn up to first place. It's time to let my shadow side flourish and get to all the books and stories that are in my queue waiting to emerge. So there will be lots more fiction, books in my existing series as well as standalone and short stories, but I will also write non-fiction under J.F. Penn. I'm planning a Gothic cathedral project in 2024 that resonates with Pilgrimage, launching on Kickstarter with a high quality photo book and perhaps a mystery I have brewing about a stonemason with a deadly secret. In terms of names, you can call me Joanna or Joe, whatever's easiest. (laughs) I will answer to both. But yes, just to be clear, the podcast continues and the Patreon continues while I focus my book writing on my JF Pen projects. From creating alone to the AI assisted artisan author. I love turning my thoughts into reality in the shape of a book. I love making stuff up and researching and working on book projects. And I love working mostly alone. 
But in the last year, I have had so much fun collaborating with ChatGPT and Claude as my creative co-pilots. I laugh more. I laugh every day. I spark off the conversations we have. My brain feels like it's on fire with ideas and I have way more creativity than ever before. I've outlined my perspective in the mega solo show on the AI assisted artisan author. So I won't go into detail here. Go and listen to that episode. I'll link it in the show notes or just search AI or I guess just search artisan on this feed and you will find it. But for the next 15 years, I see my use of AI tools expanding and changing in the same way that the last 15 years have been shaped by our expanding use of the internet and the industry that has grown up around it. From digital focused to creating beautiful physical books. The launch of the Kindle and the iPhone in 2007 enabled the rise of the successful independent author because suddenly we could reach people all over the world with our ebooks. The Kindle store back then was almost empty, and so the first wave of indie authors were able to sell a lot of books at cheap prices and capitalize on being new in the store. I had only just started to write back then, so I wasn't able to join that first gold rush but some authors rode that wave to become the first Kindle millionaires. Over the years, ebook publishing became easier, and a host of services as well as other retailers and distributors rose up to serve the industry, which soon spread into more accessible print-on-demand options as well as audiobook narration and production. As a reader, I only read fiction in ebook format – and I listen to a lot of non-fiction audiobooks, as well as buying hardback and paperback non-fiction. I belong to several subscription programmes, and I both buy and borrow what I consume online and in physical bookstores. As an author, I want to have my books and stories available in every format, wherever readers want to consume them. So I publish wide in all formats. But digital media has become ubiquitous. It's harder to stand out, especially as advertising has become more expensive and the market has become ever more crowded. With the rise of generative AI, it will become even more so, especially in the digital-first arena. I will still publish wide in all formats, but in addition, I intend to focus on making beautiful physical editions of my books and working with premium printers and creators who work in the physical product industry. I want to be as proud of the finished physical product as I am of my words, as well as associate my brand with high quality books. Plus, I want to be able to stand out from digital only creators. Which leads to my next point. From high volume, low cost to premium products with higher average order value. So I also want to create high quality premium physical products in order to keep making a living as a creator, which is becoming increasingly difficult in the digital only arena. Non-fiction genres are not so impacted, as plenty of non-fiction readers are not price sensitive, and so will buy ebooks at a higher price, and often buy multiple editions of a book that resonates. But publishers, retailers, and authors have spent the last 15 years driving down the price of fiction. Paperbacks are cheap enough in the bookstores, but ebooks and audiobooks are offered at even lower prices or as part of subscription programmes for which the author gets a smaller amount each year. Average order value is the amount a customer spends in one order with a particular merchant, and for fiction authors it's generally a pitiful sum considering the amount of work that goes into a book. This has led to the rise of bundles and box sets as well as long immersive series where read-through is necessary to return an investment on advertising spend. So as much as we love to read it and write it, fiction is a high-volume, low-cost game that is increasingly hard to play. Which leads to my next point. 
from retailer centric to direct first. I love Amazon, Kobo and Apple, Drafter Digital, plus all the other retailers and distributors and all the companies that make it possible for me to make a living online. I'm also a shareholder of Amazon and Apple, so I am literally invested in their success. I'm also a happy customer of many of these services, and I want them to succeed. But it is not the retailer's job to make an author money. It is not a publisher's job, or a bookseller's job either. These companies make money for their shareholders and employees first, and pay authors to create content to help generate more income. As authors, we need to look after our own interests first, which is why so many of us are moving to selling direct first. Consider the pie of sales income for a particular book. The direct first business model means you take the first bite of the pie, hopefully a large bite, Maybe through a Kickstarter campaign or selling through your Shopify or WooCommerce store or by doing a live event and selling in person. The money comes to you first and you get a higher percentage of the sale, paid into your bank account much faster than any other method. You can also connect with the customer directly as you have their data, which means the cost of the next sale goes down as you build your audience. Once you have taken those first bites of the pie, you publish your books everywhere else. Retailers get their share and readers can purchase or borrow your book in the way that they want. I want readers to be able to get my books in whatever format they want on whatever store they want or to borrow from the library or whatever. I will continue to publish wide so my books are eventually everywhere but I would love readers, including you, to buy direct from me and other authors if it's possible to do so. Because increasingly, this is the best way for creators to make a living and continue to write. So you can back my Kickstarter campaigns to get special editions, or you can buy from my stores, creativepenbooks.com or jfpenbooks.com. If there are authors or small press publishers you want to support, consider checking their website for a direct sale link first and join their email list so you hear about any crowdfunding projects or direct opportunities. In this way, we can keep a thriving ecosystem of independent creators alongside the dominance of the big retailers. From distance to presence. As much as I love the ease of scalable evergreen digital products, online courses and training are now very crowded. So I'm pivoting into much more personal contacts and up-to-date, shorter-form content. I will be retiring my existing evergreen self-paced courses in 2024. If you have bought a course from me, I'll email separately about that through Teachable. Instead, I will speak in person at conferences and events and online through live webinars and seminars, as well as sharing behind the scenes video and audio extras for my patrons at patreon.com forward slash the creative pen. And in fact, I have made more videos in the last few weeks as part of the Patreon as I have in years in the general sense of things. And I'm really enjoying it. They're shorter, they're specific to the point, they're timely, showing you the tools. So yeah, I've really changed the way I do this. In terms of social media, since the slow demise of Twitter, I have not found a new home. I rarely scroll social media anymore and I don't monitor messages or DMs. So yeah, don't don't message me on social media. I am still on X at the Creative Pen, but I use it mainly as an AI news feed. I do share photos on Instagram at jfpenauthor, which also feeds onto Facebook at jfpenauthor. So you can tag me there if you do buy a book, but again, I may or may not see it. I post sporadically onto Facebook at The Creative Pen. 
And I am part of several groups on Facebook, but I'm not very active. I did try threads, but I felt that it turned toxic pretty quickly. (laughs) And I don't even want to try any of the other platforms. And I'm not missing it, to be honest. Instead, I will be investing my time with my community on Patreon, replying to comments and joining in conversations, and also improving email to those on my list. You can join my email lists in two ways. Get the author blueprint at thecreativepen.com forward slash blueprint or get a free thriller at jfpen.com forward slash free. And I intend to improve my autoresponders as well as the frequency and content of my email updates. I should add just on my courses, if you have bought courses from me, you have lots of months left to download the material. So you can download whatever you want from courses you have bought to keep it for your own use. Um, I still think they're really useful. It's just I don't want to be known for that anymore. Basically, I want to focus on my uh, Patreon community and uh, doing stuff as JF Penn, basically. So it's not a emergency, quick, it's all shutting down thing. It's more a just notice that it's happening and I will obviously be communicating. Pivoting a business is always a risk. So how will all this impact my business? It's hard to say. But since change is inevitable, you either change by choice or you will be forced into it. I highly recommend Undisruptable, a mindset of permanent reinvention for individuals, organisations and life by Aidan McCullen, which I've quoted from several times before on the podcast as it is so useful. In phase six of his framework, McCullen talks about jumping the S-curve as one business model starts to die and another starts to rise. A transition from the success you have achieved today to possible success tomorrow. It can sometimes look like a step backwards, but even if you don't succeed, you will certainly develop capability in your attempt. He also recommends building capability before you need it. So even if you don't need to pivot your business right now, consider developing skills you could use later when things inevitably change. My business pivot will definitely shift the percentage split in terms of my multiple streams of income. But I'm confident that I have enough variability in place that I can adjust as I go. The Creative Pen Limited primary income streams are book sales and intellectual property rights licensing as Joanna Pen and JF Pen in all formats on all stores and retailers, as well as selling direct. Affiliate income, primarily driven by Joanna Pen Books, the website and the podcast. Podcast sponsorship from my wonderful Patreon supporters and my brilliant corporate advertisers as well as speaking, course sales, webinars and in-person events. These will all continue in some way, but the amount in each bucket and under each brand will change over time. For example, more from JF Pen Books and more from live events instead of courses. And finally, will I still be here in another 15 years? Well, the years fly by indeed. In 2008, Jonathan and I were living in Brisbane, Australia. we just got married and we had a cat, Shmi. I was an IT consultant implementing SAP financials into a massive mining company and Jonathan was a chiropractor studying for a degree in statistics. I had a plan to leave my job somehow and write, but I didn't know how my author career would shake out. I just kept learning and taking the next step. I kept writing and publishing, podcasting and blogging, connecting and building my author network. 15 years later, in 2023, Jonathan and I have been happily married for 15 years. Shmi had a lovely life after we left Australia with his adopted family, although he is gone now. And in turn, we adopted Cashew and Noisette, our two British shorthair cats. 
I'm an author entrepreneur running my own multi six figure one person business, the Creative Pen Limited. Jonathan is a senior manager in a pharmaceutical company. I don't know how the next 15 years will shake out, but I will keep writing and publishing, podcasting, connecting with my community, and building my author network. I will just keep learning and keep taking the next step. In 2038, I will hopefully still be here. I will be 63 and hopefully celebrating 30 years of happy marriage as well as writing and publishing. I know authors in the industry with that many years experience, so I know it's possible. I have role models and I can't think of anything else I want to do with my time. After all, I measure my life by what I create. So much has changed since I started in 2008. So much will change between now and 2038. What doesn't change is my desire to write, to learn new skills, to create beautiful books in the world, to share stories with readers, to inspire and educate and entertain and help other authors on the journey. I'm looking forward to the next 15 years, but let's just count them one by one. I hope you will join me in the years ahead. So that is it. That's my 15 year pivot. (laughs) I would love to know what you think. So please join the conversation. Let me know any comments or questions. Are you pivoting your author business? What changes are you making to stay nimble in this fast moving industry? You can leave a comment on the show notes or the YouTube channel, or you can email me joanna at thecreativepen.com. So I hope you found this solo episode interesting and I would love to know what you think about my pivot or what you're thinking in terms of your author business in the years ahead. You can leave a message on the show notes at thecreativepen.com or on the YouTube channel or you can email me joanna at thecreativepen.com. If you're inside the Patreon community, I will be sending out the monthly audio Q&A this week. I also have a 2024 planning video coming before year end. If you're not inside the community yet, you can join and access everything at patreon.com, p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com forward slash the creative pen. So there is no show next Monday as it is Christmas Day. Happy Christmas! (laughs) But then I will have my 2023 roundup on the last day of the year and then my 2024 goals episode on the 1st of January. I hope you can make some time to reflect on the year and plan for what's coming next over the break. In the meantime, happy Christmas, happy holidays and happy writing. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening today. I hope you found it helpful. You might also like the backlist episodes and show notes available at thecreativepen.com forward slash podcast. You can also get your free author blueprint at thecreativepen.com forward slash blueprint. If you'd like to connect, you can tweet me at The Creative Pen or find me on Facebook at The Creative Pen. See you next time.